Hey guys, Fringe here, and I got a tutorial for you guys. This is kind of my unofficial, official first tutorial. And in it, I'm going to be teaching you how to create a really nice looking um, grungy rim. And it looks really detailed and stuff, like in this one right here, this speed art, Digital Universe speed art. And in this one right here, the one I just did. Ninja works sort of like this one. It looks really nice and really professional, and it really comes out nice. Okay, so I just quickly made this. It's got some textured text with a couple layer styles to it, and just this thing, which is just a blue circle with some textures. Okay, to start off, you want to make a new layer. Control Shift N or just go down to the new layer button and name whatever you want or don't name it all I usually don't, it really doesn't matter, I can just keep track of it myself and then you want to take this vector mask which is just the, the circle, you can just make your own and just drag it over here here in case you want to duplicate all this stuff I'll just let you look at this, just pause it on each one of these Bam, 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 just a nice little chisel hard. The contour is just at this. The color is just a nice mid blue. And the gradient is just a, a metal gradient from gray, white, or gray, almost white, gray, dark gray, gray. There you go. Okay. Now you drag this vector mask over by hitting, you hit Alt and then drag. And then, you want to fill this with just black. Well, actually, don't fill it yet. Go ahead and take this vector mask, hit Control-T to transform it, and make it about just like a centimeter or less. Like, yeah, about, about a centimeter bigger by holding Shift and Alt and dragging the corner points. Shift to constrain it to its proportions and Alt to what you might call it to like do it around the center point or something like that yeah and then just hit enter whoops enter and now because that currently if I filled it it's just going to cover the whole thing because I only want it up to be a rim you control click on this thumbnail right here and then go over and hit alt and click the mask button. That will mask that away so that now only the rim part will appear once you click on this thumbnail and hit control backspace because my background color is black. And you can't see it right now but you will once we start adding layer styles and stuff like that. Okay, just double click where you on an empty space here to go open up the layer styles box or just take control shift uh and first just start with a nice bevel emboss. Set it to chisel hard and just take the size all the way up to make it a nice you know, a nice like chisely thing. Put the highlight mode down to like mm, 40% and the shadows can stay at about 80 and 70 and mm, yeah just keep that at that and actually take this hit contour and just anti alize it and yeah just at 50 is good for range and those are the same as you can keep the light as the same chisel hard inner bevel the depth you can just keep it at 100. And you can't see it, but just make a nice drop shadow. Take the opacity to 100, the spread to like around 30 is usually good for a drop shadow and size to. Ooh. About. About 20 is good. Just to give it a nice little effect and give it a little pattern here. This is um, part of a metal patterns thing that I should have a link in the description. 
these patterns right here and just take the size down to two and keep everything like that for now because now I'm going to texturize this okay go to wherever you have some nice textures and these are also going to be in the description or well you don't have to but yeah just use some nice textures first drag just this texture right here it's called black backdrop it's just a really nice grunge simple but a really nice grunge te texture and first open that back up and turn on blend interior effects as a group and turn off blend clip layers so that the texture that's as a clipping mask is above is yeah it's above the layer effects and to make a clipping mask you just alt click between the layers and then go ahead and hit control shift o or no control shift m Actually, just, just keep it at control shift at normal. Those are keyboard shortcuts for blending modes that I just know. But keep it at normal blending mode. And go to your textures and drag in another one. Drag in... Um, all of these are going to be in the description. Drag in this one right here. H, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's a really nice texture. Just so you know. I will be coming out with a big texture slash graphics pack at 200 subs. And go ahead and alt click between the layers again. And cycle through some blend modes. I'll probably just stick to... Yeah, actually screen is good because I want to lighten it up some. And drag in one more texture. Which one is it? Which one is it? One do I want? This one right here, grunge metal. And make that one also all click and make that one hard light. Or no not hard light, um overlay. Control shift O or just go to overlay. And then hit Control Shift U or click on the hue saturation layer. Alt click on it and click use previous layer to create clipping mask and then take the saturation all the way down. There are other ways to do that, but that's just the simplest one and it works every time. And then actually, that might look good if I do colorize it. Take the saturation back up, hit colorize, move it to about 200. Actually, a little bit deeper. Move it to about 210. And then take the saturation to 45. That looks pretty good. Yeah. 60. Double click on that again because i got to edit the bevel and box. Take the, take the highlight mode down some. Maybe make it color dodge. Yeah, that looks good. Color dodge and set it to 50. There we go. And actually increase the drop shadow some. Increase it to 25. And now we just want to control click on this one right here. Or no. Control click on the vector mask right there. Go up here, hit Control Shift N to create a new layer. Then hit Control Shift minus, or go up to the edit or the select menu, hit uh, Modify and all that, and then Contract, and then hit I think ooh, six might work. Oh, whoops, a lot more than that. Another six. Just hitting Control Shift minus, and another two. Uh, one more. Should be good. That's just about center on the rim, and then hit Control Shift, um, whatever you call that, Control Shift quotation thing, or just go to Edit Stroke. Whoops. Whoops. 
Whoops, that was bad. Whoops, I just did some bad stuff to this recording thing. Um. Okay, whoops. We want to make that a... We want to control Z, and then control shift comma, and give it a stroke of about five for this one maybe. No, we need a lot more. Control shift comma, ten, eh, eight, eh, nine is good. Nine and black. And then control D to deselect, and then just give it a nice pattern. I'm running out of time here. <laughs> sort of don't want this to stretch on too long. The metal pattern again. Scale 2. And an inner shadow. Set the size to 5. The choke to 40. Size to 7 is actually good. And actually a drop shadow, that gives it a little bit of depth and stuff. Set the opacity to 7. Actually the opacity to 30. There we go. And do I want that? No. And actually colorize it. Let's colorize it with another the blue again. Just something around 210 is good. And either color or try soft light. Soft light actually looks better in this case. It often does. And now, one more thing. Control click on the vector mask again. Hit Control Shift N. Control Shift minus and hit about six this time and maybe me two more no oh, actually six was good then just hit control shift comma and hit two and then duplicate it control t and make it about halfway between those two and now, hit the layer mask icon right here, Get hit B for the brush, or go over here for brushes, and just drag, first I gotta make the size a lot bigger, and just get one of these brush, get one of these default brushes like this one right here, make the size even bigger, I'm hitting um, bracket, whoops, a little too big, hitting bracket, and make sure your foreground is black, and just Click, click around here to give it a nice grunge, faded look. And I do the same thing for this one. Or, whoops. Didn't add a layer mask. Add a layer mask first, and then just do the same thing. Just click around. Whoops. I think I did something. Um, delete that layer mask. Add a new layer mask. Make sure you're. Why is it. Do... Whoops, that's the wrong one. That is the wrong one. Add it to this one right here. Whoops. And just click around here. And there we go. Whoops. There we go. That's how to make a nice detailed border. And a little bit long of a tutorial, but hopefully you stuck with it. See you guys, and I'll have more tutorials and more speed arts. Peace.